Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. And I am so, so, so excited because just by listening to this episode, we are going to wire you high vibe, bringing high energy and creativity into your life. Because right now you have sitting here, whether you're watching us or just listening to us, two sacral beings. Those who are obsessed with the human design like me, already know what I'm talking about. If you are not yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Send me a DM and we will dive into that because human design, it's incredible and amazing. Elena, I am so happy to be here with you. And like I said, I know we'll be bringing a lot of high energy, but also a lot of creativity, a lot of vision. You are such a world changer for people and what you stand for and how you embody that energy of possibility and creation. It's so beautiful. So welcome to the show. (laughs) Oh my God. Thank you so, so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. You're so welcome. And before we will be sharing that high vibe, I will bring you into this like sweet, slow motion just for a moment, because I love starting my podcast with a visual meditation. Would you be open for it? Yeah. Yes. Let's read to you. So please just gently close your eyes and get really comfortable in your chair. You won't need to be doing anything, just relaxing. So we will take together three deep breaths, breathing in through your nose and releasing through your mouth when possible, breathing in. Releasing, grounding yourself. One last breath in and ah, just remembering that this time, this space, it's really sacred. That someone out there, it's listening right now, who needs your medicine, who needs your advice, who needs your energy who is open and ready to receive the message that we have today. So open that yourself. Feel like your body, it's expanding. Feel that groundedness and relaxation flowing through your body like a beautiful, tiny light particles enlivening you even more. And when you relax into this beautiful moment, connected to your breath, connected to your body, I would love for you to visualize a beautiful sunny day on a weekend in Italy. Mm. It's a beautiful morning and the world is just rising up. And you're going to explore the city with your husband. And as you're walking through the city, they're putting there a farmer's market. They have a fresh bread that it smells on miles and a fresh flowers and a fruits and vegetables. And there are so many beautiful colors and aliveness. And as you're walking through this market and buying some fresh, juicy, delicious fruit, with your husband, you're laughing and you feel like your kids again with so much playfulness that you are both enjoying. Mm. The vendor in the store, in that stand out there, smiling at you. It's a very, very old lady. And she asks you, who are you? What is the one thing you would love this little tiny old Italian lady to know about you? Not what do you do, but who you really are. What would be your answer to her? I'm amused. Mm, That is so beautiful. And how beautiful that this lady spoke a perfect English. Mm. 90 years old Italian. So I know that Italy can be right now so much more fun than sitting here, but welcome back. How are you feeling? (laughs) Oh my God. Thank you for taking me on this journey. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. It it was really um, a vision, like a movie scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so open. I feel like, you know, sometimes we are taking 
it so seriously, you know, because you know inside, Elena, that you're here to impact others. You are here to be the visionary and to show other people the path, right? And sometimes it can feel like a lot, like a pressure, like I want to impact as many people as I can. Yeah. And we don't remember to like, okay, let's slow down. Let's receive. Let me take myself on a journey so we can see even more clearly. So that's why I love starting with the meditation to come back to this moment. And I love how open you are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a signature thing now. I feel that when you take your um, podcast interviewers on this journey, it really opens up. And for me to be in this space where I wish I were to retire with my husband one day, leaving from New York and maybe going to Italy because we love it so much. We've been traveling there so much. I think you really touched a soft spot in my heart. And um, I want to thank you for that. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Elena. And I know that I, I get the immense pleasure that we, we can't meet. We met here in Tulum. I'm so okay. blessed because Elena travels to Mexico very often. So we made it happen. And actually, Elena was introduced to me by my past client, Lauren. So it's just beautiful how it everything works, right? Like we are always guided to meet the perfect people at the perfect time. And I'm wondering, Elena, what led you to be on your journey of really embodying this energy of the powerful queen? Like when I see you, you are such a powerful queen, such a powerful empress who leads by being that, being that possibility, being that energy and giving other people the permission to be themselves too. So what allowed you to be on this journey and be the visionary? Like, how did you come into that mm -hmm. well thank you for seeing that and thank you for saying that I really really appreciate them yeah it's been an interesting journey of unfolding and a lot a lot of transformation in my life um, I originally came from eastern Europe like you are I immigrated to America when I was only 17 years old and um I think I've got it now knowing a lot about my lineage and going back and understanding, you know, what women in my lineage went through and um, how I'm embodying certain aspects of my mom and my mother and my grandmothers. Um, I respect them so much. And I think the energy that I have, first and foremost, come from my ancestors, come from that very, very strong women, um, the lineage of very strong women that I came from. And then my journey in America came to, you know, I wanted to live an American dream. I really wanted to live an American dream. And um, I, I was on Wall Street for many years. That's my background. I was actually got into coaching very, very recently. I was in finance. I was an MVP in a prestigious investment banking firm, really getting at it. You know, like I, I always thought if I were to leave this American dream, I have to work hard. I have to achieve. I have to cross all the checks, you know, on the list in order for me to be successful, in order for me to be happy. I really bought into that, you know, narrative and really worked hard for many, many years only to find myself in a place where I was not fulfilled. And I could not believe that this could be it. You know, like I could not believe that this could be it. And my mom was always saying like, I can't believe you're in front of computer all the time. I can't believe you're always like, do, like doing what you're doing. She always saw within me that there's something else that I'll be doing. And I felt the same way because I'm a very, very creative person. And being on Wall Street, it really uh, dimmed my creativity in a lot of different ways. And I was searching. I was really, really soul searching. I had this nagging feeling that I'm missing something, that I'm in some someone else's dream. I, I, I could not, I felt there was something else in, in me, within me. And I've got some glimpses of that in my dreams, in my, in my night dreams. I'm a, a very... Um, lucid vivid dreamer so certain things that i'm actually now um you know manifesting in my life a lot of that stuff i actually saw in my dreams so about seven years ago i had spiritual awakening mm -hmm. on wall street i was sitting like shoulder to shoulder with like 200 people and we were in a presentation with deepak chopra you, you, i'm sure you know and your audience knows that yes. um, this this spiritual teacher and he was talking about what it means to be an enlightened leader, an enlightened leader to the audience of, you know, Wall Street professionals. 
but a lot of things that he was discussing like really really rang true within me and then felt like oh my god I know it I feel it like it, it was really he was really speaking to me in that moment and then at the end of the presentation he decided to take everybody on the journey of like five minute meditation same way as you did with me right but it was first time I was meditating really and it was very simple I am meditation but in that moment, I had such a profound experience, kind of like an out-of-body experience, because I think I was so ready and ripe for this, for this, that I was like, you know, looking at my body from somewhere up above, kind of like an out-of-body experience. And that day when I came home, I told my husband, something happened to me today. I'll never be the same. Something shifted. And that was a shift within me, a shift in my identity that I realized I'm not just this body, not just this mind, I'm a soul having a human experience. Mm -hmm. And that profoundly shifted everything, how I looked at things. And of course, that took me on a journey of having dark night of the soul, because if you think of yourself one way, and now you have to think about yourself a different way, it's a, it's a paradigm shift within you. And you have to let go a lot, a lot of different things of how you used to think about things. And, you know, I uncovered a lot of trauma and things I was carrying within me from my childhood, like we, like we all do. <laughs> but I went on this very profound healing journey, self-discovery journey. Now in my wildest dreams, I thought I'll be sharing any of that, that I'll become a coach. I always thought that I'm just doing this for me so that I could, I could heal and I could feel better about myself. That was the, the ultimate goal. But then as I got deeper on this journey, I realized that I'm not just here to do this for me. I'm here to share it. I'm here to share it with others and impact others. So I think the way you found in me embodying certain truths is just because I first embodied it within myself before I could even open my mouth to, to start sharing it with others. And I think that's, I, I, I respect that a lot within other people when there is an integrity in what they share, that it's not just from the books, right? You can read about God is, is one thing, but experiencing God is very, very different. So I think because I've experienced God in so many different ways, um, I know that feeling and I want to take other people <laughs> to feel that. Mm, that is so here. beautiful. So beautiful, you know, Elena, because I feel like so many people are stuck in that mentality. Like I have to work hard. I have to like, you know, like deserve, right? That success, that American dream. And then you get there and you have that job and you have that house and you have that relationship and you're like, wait a minute, is this it? Yeah. Because I felt the same way because, you know, I, I created my first company. I started to make great money. I was working. So I was working seven days a week, always glued to my phone yeah. and yeah. always feeling unwell. I'm like, this can be it. So I leave the job. So I create even more job for myself. Right. And so many people are sitting in that fear, right? Fear that if they leave, there's nothing else, nothing better, right? Like, oh, I have to pay my mortgage or I have a kid and I cannot leave this relationship, you know? And it's, what would you suggest to the people who they have that feeling? I know I'm meant for more. I know there is more for me, but they don't know yet what the more is. Because, you know, you had this beautiful awakening with Deepak Chopra and I know him. I, I was on a stage with him, you know, in Texas. I was co-leading a bright work and he was a speaker there. So he's amazing. I, I love his books. But the thing is that not everyone is going to meet Deepak Chopra, right? And, and listen to him or other, you know, visionary and leader. What would you tell them? What would you tell them to focus on how they can even start? Yeah, it's a great question because I contemplated it on so, so much because I've, I really had a lot to work out from. I really built my career and I was, in a, I was a VP, I had team, I, I, like I've had that. And um, for me to leave that behind, it took a lot of consideration and I have a very analytical mind. Um, and I tried to find this balance between my intuition, listening to my heart and listening to my mind, because the mind is always going to try to protect you, to keep you safe, quote unquote, and comfortable, even though you never know if you're safe, right? You can always lose your job at any point in time. Nobody's protected completely from anything, from any downsizing, from any, from anything, right? So you never know. But I think is the, is, is for me, what really worked is first and foremost, building this, this relationship 
with my, and I call it my soul, right? My higher self, my heart. Because if I were to not to have that relationship, I would always be just listening to my mind. It would be very hard for me to make any of this move, like really, really hard. So I think if for anybody who's considering to leaving nine to five job, mm-hmm. have a plan and always like first and foremost, like consult with your own heart if that's something that you're ready for. I would always suggest to do some sort of a healing first before because if for people to like for example leave a nine-to-five job to become a coach right you have to embody that that you have to first and foremost know that you've healed enough at a certain level that you're able to speak that you're able to feel confident right because for a lot of people at least for me that's how it was I was really closed in my throat chakra I was afraid to speak up I was afraid to talk about topics of spirituality personal development I was really thought like who are who are the people to listen to really me like I don't really have an expertise like there was a lot of that you know self-doubt and unworthiness like you said so I think working on those aspects first for yourself and you can do this with a coach you can do it by yourself you can do it through books it just depends how fast you want to go right you can always do it on your own but i always suggest to do it with a team with a community with other coaches because they can help you if people already walk that path they can help you to walk it much faster and we calibrate to each other and i know for a fact like it works so much faster with the energies that are streaming from the planet right now and i remember when i was working with my coach seven years ago she's like you picking up stuff They take you like a month to heal, integrate, embody, and just go. What took me like a year to do it before. And I feel it now with my clients, like what took me a few years is now taking them a few months. It's just, we are at this crazy speed right now of awakening, healing, integrating, and just like, we got to be, you know, online (laughs) helping other people because there's just so many people to help at this moment. So always know that if you have this, feeling inside your heart that you meant for more, it means you meant for more. You wouldn't even have that feeling to begin with, but follow that, right? Like do some self-discovery, do some self-healing, do some, some investigation. It's like, what could be preventing you? Are there any blocks that you know keep you back, keep you small? And once you remove that, like the road's going to open up. Like you'll know when to make the next, next move and you're not going to be afraid because that's what keeps us back this fear of the unknown. But once you like step up and you start feeling more confident, you raise your vibration, you're like, wait a minute, like what worked? Like what was I was afraid of yesterday? I'm not afraid of anymore. Mm. And you just go and you just follow your heart. Mm. So that's what I'd say. Thank you so much, Elena. I really love that because, you know, some people are more like, oh, let me just go with the flow and follow my intuition. Me, right? Like plan, forget the plan. Like I made a plan in 2020, Elena, and nothing worked. Like (laughs) stuff happened, right? In the world, like everything that I have planned for a month with my business coach. I'm like, okay, let's put it in a closet, right? So 2020 was an interesting year. I it's same for me. 2020 is when I I got this intuitive hit that March 2020 world will change like I have to leave my corporate job by March 2020 and that was my resignation like I left 2020 and that's what the COVID hit wow I love that I was supposed to be hosting a live event I did live event in 2019 called meant for more we'd have almost 100 women there and I wanted to do it like every year you know the first year it was easy I find an amazing location and the people and the speakers everything was easy and in 2020 when I was planning it it was struggle. I couldn't find a place, the location. I'm like, mm. it's not meant to feel this way. So I'm like, let me see if I really want to do it this year, you know? And then COVID hit, you know? So I'm like, thank God that I didn't commit it, didn't plan, didn't pay. You know, wow. it's, it would be so challenging. So we're always guided. And, and that's something that I also hear that you say, like, we are going to be guided, you know? Like the things, taking it one step at a time. And I love how you said, like, you choose your own speed. I was just, I had this epiphany yesterday. I was sharing it with my husband. I created this analogy. I'm like, I got to record a podcast about it. But I have this vision when people are on a treadmill and the treadmill, it's unplugged. There is no electricity going into it. So you have to be like going and pushing and like really creating the momentum. That's when people are working without coaches or mentors. They can still get to the places. 
but it's going to be more struggle because it's slower and you have to put so much work into it and you got to put your head down because you got to watch every step because it's so heavy. And then you meet a coach, meet a mentor, it's like plugging it in. Now you can choose the speed, you know, the, the incline, however you want to go. And it's amazing. And then you get this momentum and you keep going. And then some people, they keep going and rising and some people, unplug it they're like I am good I created the momentum I'm doing amazing and they go back into you know that slow motion and yeah. it's not like one is right or wrong as coaches we know that some people come to us and they're ready because they got exactly what they need and some people just go back into their old self because they're afraid they're afraid of expansion they're afraid of the unknown like you said so I just love that analogy you know because with the coaches and mentors you can always go faster. And again, nothing wrong with that. I was very stubborn. I'm like, I got it. I figured it out. It's the Eastern European in me. Like, don't bother. I'm not asking. I don't need the help. I got this, you know, 10 years later, I was like, Shit, this is long. I don't like this. I want to help, you know, in the moment that I ask for help, it's like all the door starts opening, you know? And so it's so beautiful. And I know that you also host the retreats and support people in person because mm -hmm. I really feel like once you like dip your toes into the waters of a life events and being in the presence of your mentor, it's yeah. priceless. That's yeah. like when the quantum leaps are happening. So what are some of the next things that you are planning for yourself or see for yourself and your company now that you are saying everything is speeding up? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I absolutely enjoy hosting retreats and that's how we're like, we're mad, right? Because I was in Tulum doing a retreat and um, I've done it now three, three times in Tulum. And I really enjoy it because I, when, I, when I'm doing a retreat, it's a combination of all the things that I'm love and all the skills that I'm embodying right so it's it's I love the planning of it I like the spiritual aspect of it because we go deep into healing we go deep into spirituality I like the you know the, the goddess vibes right when we on the beach when we go to spas when you go for go for shopping like all of that I absolutely love all the components and bringing them into retreat so I'm hoping that I will continue bringing people to Tulum to the retreats um, I also do want to like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to right now um, just do some research on Web3 just to see like how we can get into the space of, you know, metaverse. It, it's been on my mind right, with NFTs and everything that's evolving right now, because, again, like my background, I came from Wall Street. Like I, I know I, and fintech, right? Like I, I know technology, like it's not going anywhere. It's going to be here. And I and I've known in my past of how women have been minority in so many different industries. And I think um, the world of NFTs and and, and Web3 can open up opportunity for creatives. It can open opportunities for women. So I'm doing some research there of how I can uh, implement and how I can bring this to my community as well uh, so that we can you know, thrive together in that space. It's very, very new for now, but um, I'm, uh, I'm just doing a lot of research at the moment. And of course, I'm doing a lot of um, like online workshops, some of them in New York, but mostly online. Uh, two-day workshops, you know, a week programs, eight weeks programs, just different com com containers that I create for um, people to come in at any price point, to come in at any, wherever they are on a journey. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all around feminine energetics. It's all about, you know, finding that, that voice within you, your intuition and connect to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very passionate about this industry, I'm very passionate about the work that we do. And, um, and I know it's only going to expand. I'm here for expansion. That's mm -hmm. what I think the soul wants. The yes. soul wants expansion of consciousness, of presence, of everything, of love. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm here to share it. Yes, you are. And I can really feel that passion, you know, and it's like when we're turned on, right? How magnetic we become to the people around us and they just want to join our journey. So for those who want to learn more about you and who wants to connect with you, Elena, what is the best way to learn more about your magic, <laughs> your vision? Instagram has been my, uh, my, my platform all these mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. um, I share a lot there. Like I, I, I do a lot of my own videos. Um, my husband takes my pictures for the most part. Uh, yeah, we'll make a great team when it comes to this. He, we, we're both creative. And um, 
And I share a lot there, whether it's educational uh, videos, whether just inspirational videos. And Elena Visionary is my Instagram name. So if anybody wants to connect, I'm really um, hands-on on replying to DM. So if anyone wants to reach out, um, just know you're always going to get a response from me. <laughs> oh, love that. And yes, she is really responsive. And on top of her DMs, I love that you are doing your DMs and that you are so supportive. Elena, thank you so much for today and for all the visions and the possibilities that you are bringing to especially women, you know, like showing a different possibilities. You don't have to work hard. You don't have to be quiet. You don't have to live in fear. Like you can create your own freedom, independence and doing it from beautiful feminine space like you really embody that masculine feminine balance when you know when you use this or that so thank you for today and all the work you're doing thank you so much for having me thank you